My name is Dr. Philip Ritzlowski from the Advanced Foot and Ankle Center of San Diego, and welcome to The Fix. Today, we are excited to have joining with us Dr. Byron Hutchinson from Seattle, Washington. Welcome, Dr. Hutchinson. It's great to be here. So, tell us a little bit about yourself and your practice. Yeah, so I have a, a deformity correction practice. I see a lot of complex uh, types of deformities, and I work out of uh, Fran Franciscan uh, Health System. I'm an employed physician, and I've been doing this for about 35 years. I'm very interested in hearing about this case today. It's a gentleman about uh, 46 who uh, has a condition where the tendons on the outside of his foot and ankle have been ruptured. And over time, the foot's gotten into a, what we call an equinovarus deformity, where the ankle's dislocated. So he's walking on the outside of his foot and it's not really even able to be braced. So he's a pretty miserable guy uh, because his foot and his ankle are malaligned. So when these people come to your office, how do you analyze them? And what are the steps that you take that helps you decide what surgeries they need? Yeah, the big issue is, is first of all, what their circulation is like, because if they don't have good circulation, um, sometimes doing open procedures can be problematic. So that's the one thing. Because of the deformity, um, there's some contractures in the skin as well, so we want to evaluate that. And then ultimately, the x-rays really tell the story. And this gentleman had a ankle that was what we call varus. So instead of the two bones in the ankle being parallel, it was tilted. So the real issue for this gentleman, not only walking on the outside of his foot, was what that malalignment in the ankle does over a long period of time. So I wanted to get that realigned so we could avoid having fusion procedures. Ah, so you had a patient here with a curved foot, getting some wounds you mentioned to me as well previously. Yes. And those wounds kept coming back and you have a joint that you're trying to save as well. Yes. Because if that joint is kind of off tilt and it's rubbing, then the cartilage is gonna rub out. Absolutely. And then they could potentially end up with an ankle replacement or sometimes even loss of a leg. Yes. So you had this patient, you comes into the office, and I'm assuming you take some measurements? Yes. You know, they say, measure twice, cut once. Yes, and we definitely didn't want to cut too much with this because of his uh, soft tissue envelope. So um, made the decision that some of the uh, minimal incision portions of this could be some of the tendon work where I did some tenotomies on some of the tendons that had overpowered the ones that were lost. And that was done under a little tiny incision. The only bony procedure was a small incision in the outside of the, the heel bone to cut it with an osteotome, not a saw. And I could acutely move that where I wanted it. And the rest of the deformity we took care of with the circular fixator and did that part of the deformity gradually. So in the operating room, you do part of the procedure, and then when the patient comes home, you give them instructions on turning the little struts that are attached, and those are based on the measurements you've taken. Yes. And they get this informational sheet, sometimes it's a computer program, in this particular case it wasn't. Right. You told them which ones to turn and how fast, and it's really tiny, it's like it's a mill. It's very tiny, yeah, a millimeter a day. Um, and, you know, we initially started out with the foot component, and so he was turning one strut medially, or on the inside of the foot, and one strut laterally to push the foot around. The, the talus, or the bone under the ankle, was fixed. We call that being constrained, so that only one deformity is being uh, corrected at a time. At about three weeks, we were able to pull the pin that was in the talus, so now we could correct his Aquinas deformity or his plantar flexion deformity. So that was all done just with uh, the changing of the struts or moving of the struts. So the whole process from the first surgery till the final correction was how long? It's about six weeks. Um, and we took him back to the operating room to take the frame off. Once the frame was off, we had a foot that was plantar grade, and we actually had an ankle joint that was parallel now. So we saved that ankle joint from needing any other surgery. And his foot was plantar grade, so it, I, I, it was a very big success. 
So how's the patient doing now? Guy's doing great. He's got a plantar grade foot, so his foot's on the ground. He's no longer walking on his outside of his foot. And he's got no ankle pain anymore because the joint is congruous or not tilting anymore. And, uh, you know, he, he's unfortunately got the same thing on the other side, but we'll do that uh, at some time in the future. Ah, so very interesting case. So this is a case that utilizes minimally invasive approach with very small incisions. Yes. Applying a device that will slowly correct it. And in my experience, there's actually less pain with these procedures, although the, the device looks like it could be painful, but many times it's less painful. Is that your experience? Yeah, that's totally been my experience. I think that uh, as long as the wires are tight, um, there's this thought that you're turning this and it's gonna cause pain and it's a millimeter a day. So they might feel some pressure, but that's really all they feel. And since they're minimal incisions for the open part of the surgery, um, they don't have these massive incisions that create uh, situations where they need to be on pain medication and things like that. So patients do very well with these fixators as long as they're aware of what it is and what you're doing with it. So Wow, that's really a great case. I mean, really very informative, teaching us a lot about a small incisional approach using a combination of gradual and acute correction. This is a really cutting edge and ahead of the pack type of surgery. Thank you for sharing this with us today. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us on The Fix.